Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Andy's Shed Live. This is series 7, episode number 21 for Sunday the 21st of June 2020. Hello there and welcome to the show. It's another Andy Shed Live here on this Sunday evening. Almost back to our uh, to our old times here tonight. It's 18.42 UK time right here. And I've got to whiz through it tonight because we've got a lot to pack in to it. Um, telephones arrived this week. Um, quite a lot of different telephones actually and as the title caption said one of them is a GEC 706 clone that is the GEC clone of the telephone 706 that was uh, issued by the GPO um, from around about 1957 onwards GEC of course made 706s for the for the post office um, but uh, they uh, they also made their own as well. Um, my phone's beeping away there. I've got to say hi to Christopher Two Thousand out there uh, in the in the southern hemisphere. It's the middle of the night for uh, for Chris. So good morning, good evening, whatever you want to call it down there. Um, have you been out train spotting today, Chris? Right. We're going to crack on, as I say, um, and have, take a look. At this, this is one of the phones that has arrived um, with me um, this week, um, and it's a 706 clone. Okay, it's not an actual GPO issued 706, and there is an easy way to tell if it's GPO issued or not. Um, and Chris has been train spotting apparently. Um, all right, the way the way to tell if it's a GPO seven oh six is you look at these numbers on here. This is what we, there's different names for this, but I call it a dial bezel. This thing round here, and a genuine one has the numbers or letters or whatever are marked on it on the back. This is actually a piece of clear plastic then printed and painted on the back so no matter how much you rub at that you can't rub anything off because it's on the back if it's a fake one if it's a modern one and there are reproductions available they are printed on the front and you can rub them off so this is a genuine one now the way you tell this is not a gpo issued one is because it's only got numbers and at this point in history when 706s were being made um, if it was a GPO one it would have numbers and it would also have had letters corresponding to uh, certain, uh, certain positions on the dial as well similar to how American phones do but not exactly the same strangely the letters on a British phone that correspond to the numbers on the dial are in a different place some of the letters are on a different number so if you use an american phone to dial a to dial a british number with letters you know like 1800 phone or whatever if you do it on an american one on the british system you get a wrong number and if you do it on a british one on the american system you'd get a wrong number as well because the letters aren't on the same uh, positions on the dial but that's another story for another day so this because it's only got numbers this is a private phone now GEC who made this phone also made phones for the post office um, for the GPO they made genuine 706s as well um, but they also made phones for use on private systems if there's a big factory or something like that or a big office block that had its own uh, PAX um, telephone exchange system in the uh, in the basement or somewhere. Um, then, um, then uh, you would have had on that private system. You would have had phones like this. 
supplied by whoever put the phone in. So if it was a GEC PAX, um, you would have had GEC phones. If it was an Ericsson, you would have had Ericsson phones and so on. Uh, Chris says, did I see the pictures of phones I sent? I did see them, Chris. They are absolutely excellent. And uh, when I get them onto the computer, I'll, we'll put them up. Maybe, maybe next week or something, I'll, 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 I shall put them up and, uh, and let, people, let people see. Because it's quite a good collection. Uh, hello, Claus. Claus says, evening. Um, so, what I thought we'd do today um, would be take the uh, top of this phone and let you have a look inside it and possibly even get it going by fitting a line cord to it um, <coughs> because I've had various people ask me about how to do this over the years there's plenty of videos out there about fitting line cords to ordinary 706's but when it's a Ericsson and like an Ericsson N1900 or when it's a GEC like this one um, it confuses some people and by the way this is a GEC and it says underneath it Tell 61K ATS so it doesn't say 706 or anything under there um, but I'm pretty sure it's a GEC phone because it was the Reliance Telephone Company I don't know if you can see that there the Reliance Telephone Company, a GEC company. And GEC, of course, stands for General Electric Company. So it was a General Electric Company, company or General Electric Company subsidiary, as it actually says on the dial uh, of the phone here. So here it is. Um, right, which way around would you like it? Which way around is better for you to have a look at it? We'll, we'll put it this way around. So you can see, and I work backwards, like they used to on Blue Peter. Okay. Unfortunately, I don't have one I prepared earlier. Um, right, so what we're going to do is take a screwdriver, and because it's a 706 type, basically you just take these two um, screws out of here. They should be retained. Yeah, and then just sort of press down on the two like on the two cords that are coming now with your thumb, and then lift the back of the phone up, and it should come off quite easy. You have to lift it up, and then move it forwards like that, because on the front of the case there are little lugs that go under the front of here. So you have to lift it at the back, and then move it forwards, and then up. Okay, and there it is. And if you get really lucky, the phone will have on the inside of it a little uh, thing like that, which will tell you perhaps what it is. And as you can see, it says GEC Telephone 706 Type. So it's very similar to a 706 this. Very similar to a 706. So, we've got the top of it. And it is indeed very similar to a 706. You'll notice it's got a bell on off switch fitted to it. Um, the eagle eyes of you will spot it's a grey one, not a green one. It should be a green one, I would have thought. But that's a grey one, so I don't know if that's one that somebody's fitted later. But when we look inside this, it is basically exactly the same as a 706 would be on the inside. It's exactly, exactly like a 706 on the, uh, on the inside. Uh, I'm just having a rummage. Something in my little pile of bits here. Oh, I haven't got them here. The bits that I want, I haven't got here. I wanted to show you some alternate bits for the inside. Not to worry. Right, so here you have it. And this is in its unconverted form. Now you can lift these 
wires up here and untwist them but you'll find they're twisted over so turn that upside down like that and you'll see the curly cord which of course goes to the handset goes basically to wires on this side and the other side is basically wires for <coughs> wires for the line cord and it's the line cord that we are hoping to change today now here it is as it's come um, basically to me and you can see T1, T2, T3 are all separate but T4, 5, 6 and 7 are all joined together on this particular phone okay 4, 5, 6 and 7 are all joined then 8 and 9 are joined together and 10, 11, 12, 13 are apart 14 and 15 are joined 16 and 17 are apart and 18 and 19 are joined now if this was an ordinary 706 you would join um, 16, 17, 18 and 19 together but but here's the but on this particular phone if you can see it and I don't know if you can or not on 17 there's a green wire 17 here there's a green wire that is coming from I'm just trying to get it in focus a bit more if I can there's a green wire that is coming from the line cord but also there is a brown wire and that brown wire is going up to this bell on off switch okay that's on 17 that's on 17 on 16 there is a blue wire and a grey wire that goes to the bell on off switch okay on 16 so that switch obviously can jumper those two 16 and 17 so we're not going to fit a jumper between those two we're going to rely on the switch doing it um, okay now the blue wire in an old line cord isn't used and it's parked there on T15 T15 is jumper to T14 but this is a plastic based phone there's no other connections to them so that jumper doesn't need to be there because there's no other connections to it and that blue wire no connections to it so the blue wire is dead but this is the thing about old um, old handset old, old line cords what, it used to be the blue that they didn't use and now it's the green we don't use so we're going to take that blue off that goes to the old line cord there we're going to take that off and while we're about it we might as well take this jumper out from here as well because it's not doing anything so we'll take that jumper out okay and we'll put those back down for now So what else have we got then from the line cord? Well, we've got white, which is going to T18 here. And we've got red, which is going to, what is it, T8, is it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, yeah, red to T8. So it's red to T8, white to T18. That is normal. 
for what we're what we're going to do here so we're going to take them off because obviously we're fitting a new cord with a plug and socket thing on the end so that's T8 and that's T18 we'll take that thing out there now so now the only one is T17 which has got the green attached to it and I think that's going to need the blue of the new cord attaching to it rather than the green so we'll get rid of the old cord now but I always keep these cords and this has got the grommet on each end it's a nice original green cord with a nice original green uh, grommet on each end so I always keep these because they're part of the originality but we are going to fit one of these which is a new old stock cord um, from the 80s um, it is actually grey in colour although it looks white and this is what they fitted when they started putting 8 in front of things like you've got 8746 and 8706 and that, um, the 8 in front meant they got that that plug on the end of the line cord it also meant they got low impetus bells but which is where the resistor comes in we'll talk about in a minute so here's our line cord yeah yeah so white and there it's not absolutely crucial which way around these go but it is just good practice to do them this way says he wondering if he's got it right or not <laughs> is that the way around they were um, it's a good practice to do it like that right and the other one that we use is the blue which is the bell wire which is going on here on T17 where that brown connector is that's where the green wire came from if you remember so I'm going to just open that up a little bit more so I can just push it in under there hopefully there we go and because 15 has got nothing connected to it now we'll just park the unused green connector onto 15 okay now what have I done wrong here for a converted 706 the blue I think I've done the blue wrong, haven't I? Right, let's have a little look. At a converted 706, and I have done the blue wrong. Um, because if you look at a converted 706, I've got the white and the red in the right places, but the blue. should go up to T1, 2, 3, 4, 5, to T6. You see? And then through the 3.3 resistor via a link, then off to the bell set. And the other end of the bell set should be on T16. So, I've got blue there on that end. I 
like a bell. So the other end of the bell So now I've got to take that blue off there then. I'm just thinking about this now. So I've taken that blue off again for a minute. Just while I have a think about this diagram. Now. I've got now 18, 17, 16, T16 and T17 that are the sides of that switch, yeah? And a bell set needs to come in to one side of 16 and 17 and not the other, right? And if you look, there is a wire coming in here on 16 and can you see that thin blue wire in there yeah that's connected to 16 and that thin blue wire you have to take my word for it runs inside here and up to that bell set so that runs up to the bell set okay from 16 which is the purple wire on that picture there. So what I've done there is between T16 and T17 on there, where there's a link on that diagram, there is a switch. Now, which will allow me to switch the bells off at that side, okay? So where between 16 and 17 on that diagram, that is where this switch is connected okay because these are the three cords to the switch the blue and the gray are on 16 the brown is on 17 okay so that will break the bell circuit so the other end of the bell circuit can go where it would normally go in a 706 which is on T6 so the blue goes one, two, three, four, five, six. Goes on there on to T six. Okay. Yeah, so that's T6, but what's that on T7? Let me ask myself. So we're just having a look, because there's a green wire that goes over the top of it there that's a red herring. But that wire is just sort of sat on the top of it. Is that wire actually connected to it? Perhaps it is actually, yeah. And where does it go? That goes onto the capacitor. Well, we're going to take that capacitor out of the system because remember, in a modern system, the capacitor is in your master socket in your house. So, although that's got something connected to it, it doesn't need to be connected up anymore to anything else. So, I can take that link out because we're not going to use this big chunky capacitor in the phone because we're using the capacitor that's in the, that's in the house wiring. Okay, so we can take that one out. So, again, where does that blue go? It goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and there should then be a link back to 5. So that blue goes one, two, three, four, five, six. It goes on to there. And there is indeed a link back to five. And 
and this is where you need a 3.3k resistor 3.3 kilo ohm resistor or 3.3 thousand ohm resistor so basically 3,000 uh, 300 ohms and it would normally then go between 4 and 5 here T4 and T5 where that link is now why is there a link in there and not a resistor okay there's the res there's a picture of it with the resistor in but that's when it things have been converted which they haven't been at the moment we're in the process of doing it right let me explain it to you the bell set the bell coils in um, a 706 originally were two 500 um, ohm coils okay that were in series so a thousand ohms altogether yeah the problem is that that was when phones were hardwired and you only basically had one phone unless it was very special circumstances and the telephone engineer came and fitted you a second phone somewhere else in the house which was unusual when plug and socket came in people could have up to four phones of their own and they could have them all over the shop um, so there's a thing called a ren value which you have to take into account which is basically how much power the phone uses and the ren value can be between one and four now a phone that doesn't use much power to ring like a modern phone that does a little warble probably has a ren of one but a phone like this that has mechanical ringers you know and big clappers that move backwards and forwards and that takes a lot of power so it has a ren of four and it has a ren of four because it uses those big chunky bell coils that you can just see down in there that sort of uh, salmon pinky like brownie colour coil you can see two of them just hiding down in there now they are two 500 volt coils in series to make a thousand ohms we want there to be 4000 ohms we want the resistance those coils to be 4000 ohms so the phone doesn't use as much of the overall power it, it, not as much of the power can get through to the, to the coils to make it ring so what you can either do is change it for two more modern coils that are 2000 ohms each or in series with your 500 ohm coils you can basically try and put another three uh, thousand ohms to get your 4000 ohms so you need a 3000 ohm resistor well resistors come in um, set values and the nearest you can get is basically 3300 ohms or 3.3 kilo ohms and that's near enough basically so what you do is you take that link out between four and five and put a resistor in there 3.3 kilo ohm resistor in there now because I'm just testing this and because I've only got one phone plugged into the socket that I'm going to be testing it on one phone basically because I'm going to be testing it basically on a master socket that's not got anything else plugged into it I'm just going to leave that for now because I've just not got a resistor to hand I've didn't think to bring all my tools into the room where I make these videos so I'm leaving that but what you should do is that link there between four and five you should take that out and put a 3.3 kilo ohm resistor in its place okay 
Right, we've had a few things coming in the comments, so I'm just going to read them. Uh, Claw says he loves the 706. He says, I changed most of my collection to have the Ericsson chrome handle. Looks so much better. Um, it does, I grant you it's nice, but that chrome handle was never fitted to a GPO phone, ever. They, uh, most of them didn't have anything. Some 706s has had plastic handles, plastic coloured handles. But uh, the chrome handle is a dead giveaway. that It's an Ericsson clone phone um, of a 706 and it's not a real 706. It's a, it's one off a private system, but it's an Ericsson one like this is a GEC one. And Christopher 2000 says, when I was converting my 706 telephone, I had the use of the bell capacitor to make the bells ring. I had to use the bell capacitor to make the bells ring here in Australia. Um, because you don't have uh, the capacitor built into the telephone jacks. Yeah, well that, that that's fine. If you've not got the capacitor built into the phone jacks, and to be honest, I don't know why we have the capacitors built into the phone jacks. It seems silly to me. Um, but if you don't have the capacitor built into the phone jacks, you leave that link on in there. You basically don't convert the phone at all. There's no conversion to do um, to it. Um, if you... Uh, if you've just got a two wire system or, or even a three wire system um, but if you've not got to take the capacitor out of the the system then the then there's uh, then there's no uh, no need to do any kind of conversion on it so you're probably quite lucky there Chris um, right so I think we've done this I think we've done this conversion here so what we're going to do now is put that back on there now for some reason these are always crossed so you see most of oh, I'm not the wrong camera you see most of the line cord wires go on this side and most of the handset wires go on this side for some reason in their wisdom the GPO crossed them when it was this way around you can have these obviously whichever way around you want you know the curly cord on whichever side you want on the line cord on whichever side you want but that is the correct way around to do it I assure you but you can have them either way right we'll put the lid back on and this is where it gets interesting and this is where you sometimes have to take the dial off um, right what are we doing down here as well Right, there's a, a thing I've not done down there as well. Because if we look back at, um, at a photo, you see 16, 17, and 18, and 19 are um, together on that, are wired together. Well, we've only got 18 and 19. And I think we need 17 wired up to 18 and 19 as well. So, but not 16 because remember, between 16 and 17, it's going through this switch on the top. If it didn't have the switch, then you'd need a wire between uh, 16 and 17 as well. But as it is, we just need to put one between 17 and 18. So, I'll just take those two off a minute, just because it's easier to do it that way. Um, then we put brown on there. And we put white on there. Hopefully that should do it. Right now we'll try and put the cover back on and remember it's got to go on at an angle front down and it you have to move it inwards like that so those lugs go under the front 
and then just drop it down and it should drop into place like that and that's gone on quite well if it doesn't go on very well if it catches on the dial then you might have to take the finger wheel off the dial but that's gone down nicely as you can see it's all nice and snug at the back so we can now do up the two screws in the top See? and that's where the, uh, the thing that Claus was on about the, uh, the the chrome handle would fit across there on an Ericsson one they take these little chrome escutcheons off and fit a complete chrome handle that includes the escutcheons it's one long piece and um, and it includes the screws as well and Ericsson make a nice chromey one put a nice chromey one on their phones but uh, for some reason the GPO cheaped out on uh, on doing that and uh, to be honest I have no idea why because the GPO didn't normally cheap out on stuff like that so it was a bit bit strange that but there we have it it's it's all together now so all I've got to do now is find something to plug into right what have we got I'm looking for a Here I can plug into. Excuse me a minute while I rub it on the floor. I think it's 23 I've took it out and we'll plug this in which is my new cord and I'm doing this in a BT revelation oh I need a little clip yeah there's a dial tone in there if you can hear that if you can hear that or not so that sounds good so let's see if I can uh, call a phone with it and as I'm blowing into the receiver there and as I'm blowing into the receiver there I can hear me blowing back through here which is um, which just tests that everything's working so that is sounding awfully good to me right let's now see if I can call it so I'll use this black phone dial 23 and there you go, it's ringing, I'll put the black one down, and I'll let you see this, I'll pick it up, and hello, 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 okay, and if I hang up the black again, and then dial 23, and I push that bell on off button, it then stops ringing, but trust me it is still actually ringing and if I turn the bells back on again oops it's stuck <laughs> off on on off 
on and off and it's a really strange sort of rockery switch you have to press one side of the switch to turn it off and the other side of the switch so the switch will pop back up again and turn back on and then I can just check yeah I can just check that everything is um, everything is uh, working as it should be there so that is one nice GEC um, 706 clone phone and I've put the handset on the wrong way around it should go that way so there we have it uh, Chris says uh, he did his GPO 706 phone uh, did it use metal finger wheels because his GPO 706 has a metal finger wheel um, they did Chris um, is a simple answer to that the GPO did use a metal finger wheel but for a very 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 short space of time when the 706 first came out um, basically the metal finger wheel was fitted to the very first few phones that had a dial number 12 fitted to them most 706s have a dial number 21 fitted but the very first few that came out of the factories some of them had dial 12s fitted which go back to the 300 series that were previous to the 700 series phones and if they had a dial 12 fitted it had a um, metal finger wheel and I happen to have a phone here it's not a GPO phone but it's the other one this is the one I have on my desk all the time here and this has got a metal finger wheel and you see now these look the same this one I don't know who made this one actually off the top of my head and it doesn't say anything underneath it um, I can't remember off the top of my head who made this one it may be an Ericsson it may be another GEC I can't remember I think it's possibly an Ericsson this one but I'm not 100% certain on it right these are both 706 clones I can't get them any closer under the camera than that Hang on. these are both 706 clones okay This one has got a dial 12. This one has got a dial 21. The parts are interchangeable. The way you can tell if it's a dial 12 or not, or if it's a dial 21, is you look at the finger stop. Now, you see on this one with the dial 21, the side that your finger goes to is sort of straight and then it's got like a kink in it. It's got like a cutout in it. The other side of it is dead straight. So basically it's made up of three straight lines, the two sides. One side is completely straight, the other side is straight and kind of dogs in and then kinks out again with that sort of cutaway bit, yeah? This one, look, is curved on both sides. There's no straight lines involved at all. And that curved one is a dial 21. No, that's right. That's a dial 12, the curved one. The one with the straight lines is a dial 21. There's also differences in how you fit the how you fit the dial label in the middle there, and that of course. But don't be, don't go on that because you can take that metal finger wheel off there, off that dial 12, and put it on that dial 21. The problem is a dial 21 is flatter where the finger wheel fits to it. So if you put a metal um, finger wheel off a dial 12 onto a dial 21, then you've not got as much depth to put your fingers through. You, the, the actual metal bit is very close to where the numbers are, or, or the chevrons in this case, and you can't really get your finger in it very deeply. It's not it's not sort of deep enough to get your finger into 
because uh, on on the dial um, 12 if I can show you maybe I'll best on this camera on the dial 12 it sits up proud of the phone can you see there's a gap there can you see the gap under the finger wheel because that's because there's a raised bit in the middle of a dial 12 a dial 21 doesn't have it no, can you see there's hardly any gap at all in that but the finger wheel itself being plastic is thicker okay so although you can change the parts it's not good practice to change them over um, so if you've got a 706 that's got that curvy finger stop then that's a sign that it's a very very early one it's a uh, it's a dial 12 fitted one or it's had a dial 12 bodged onto it at some point in its life because all these bits are interchangeable you can even fit a dial 10 to one if you want to um, so I think Chris if your GPO 706 has got a metal finger wheel if it's correct it should certainly be pre certainly be pre 63 and probably pre-1961 I would think so it should be a very early one which would also make it a diacon case if it's got its original case which is that different sort of plastic that's the sort of plastic that doesn't go discoloured um, that it keeps its colour but it's very brittle so whatever you do don't sell it and post it to anybody because it'll arrive smashed it's like putting a it's like putting a, a fine porcelain vase in the post. It'll break as soon as you look at it if it's diacon. Um, but it doesn't go discoloured. So diacon diacon is nice to look at, but not very practical for phone cases. Which is why they changed it for to ABS because they were getting called out so often to go and replace cases where phones had got broken. Uh, because of course the phones were rented they weren't they weren't bought outright and so the GPO didn't want to have to keep going and doing all these call outs because it was costing them money they just wanted to take the money for the phone rental but not have to keep going and servicing them so um, so the fact they did have to keep going and servicing them because they had to keep changing the cases they didn't like that so that's why they then went switched to ABS cases which actually is inferior in terms of the finish of the case because it, it yellows over time but it is a little bit stronger it doesn't break quite so easily it's almost like glass diacon it's kind of perspex pretty much so I don't know what you've got there Chris it sounds like you've got a very very early phone there if that's all right if it's not been sort of cobbled together out of bits um, then it sounds like you've got a very early example of a 706 there so it, it, it'll be a nice one that was that in the pictures that you sent me I can't remember I'll have to dig the pictures out we'll dig the pictures out I'll show everybody the pictures next week right I'll turn I'll turn things back around on the desk put the phone that I use back where I back where I have it and the green one oh, well I'll leave it connected for a little while the green one but I'll turn it turn it round to face me and as you can see this was on a private system because of the as I said earlier because of the Reliance Telephone Company Limited dial label and when I got this the other day that dial label wasn't showing it was just white in the middle and um, what happened was I took the finger wheel off um, to have a look inside the dial because I serviced inside the dial because it was all a bit sticky. <coughs> Excuse me. And when I took it off, I realized mean, the plain white label was actually the back of the original label, so I just turned it back around and put it back in again. So there we have it. So that's that one. Quickly before we go, I'll show you um, some of the others um, that I got. The other day um, also in the same batch as this uh, this green phone that I've got here I also got yet another ivory um, 746 it's a later model one as you can see from the shape of that there and it sort of goes down across and up and it's not 
it's not a gentle slope from the front if it's a gentle slope from the front there down to there it's an early case one but this is a later case one after they modified them um, this has not got a suntan over the years um, and again it's a GEC product we know this it says GEC on underneath it though 746 gen 741 so that's quite an early one for these cases for these new style cases um, unless of course it has had the case changed at some point in its life which is possible so that's a straightforward 746 in ivory if anybody out there wants a 746 in ivory and wants to do a swap for something basically it's not a 746 in ivory um, and game if anybody like in other countries particularly in America who's got a very common to America 500 series for instance who would like a 746 I'd happily do you a swap because um, I like the American 500 series and I've got a lot of ivory 746s because when you buy a batch of phones you, know, buy, you might buy five or six in a in a job lot off eBay or something um, chances are there's an ivory 746 in amongst them and I, I must have got about 30 or 40 um, right also what came the other day is this this is a 764 a one stroke 764 that uses battery secondary number 22 now what this is this is a sort of first go around at a push button phone it was pulse dialing and it did the pulsing um, by using a battery a rechargeable battery that was inside the phone um, and it charged up while it was on hook then when it went off hook it connected the battery and used the power from the battery to generate the pulses when you press the the keys um, trouble is it's not complete this um, so quite a bit of work to do to get that going and along a similar but different tone we've got one of these now this is unusual because you look at this and you think initially this is a similar thing based on a 746 but this one's not based on the 746 because look at the case look up here on the case it's a 706 type case and I know it's broken there's a big hole in the front um, this is how phones sometimes arrive with big holes in them like this but this is not beyond the story um, but what makes this unusual is it's a 706 type case with push buttons now by the time the GPO got on to push buttons they were using 746 type cases to case their push button phones not 706 cases so this is one off a private system somewhere let's have a look underneath it and it says TEL 69P ATS so I've got a feeling this is another GEC phone that was made for a private system somewhere and interestingly it's Concord Blue now the GPO didn't do push button phones in anything other than grey ivory and I'm not sure if they did black uh, not sure if they did black but they certainly did grey and ivory they, the GPO certainly did not do push button phones in any other colour they didn't do blue ones, they didn't do red ones they didn't do green ones, if you see any of those they've been recased or they're not GPO phones but this is uh, I believe it's an original case to the phone um, and well as you can see it's in the right state but it's Concord Blue which people tell me is the rarest colour of all the colours that were done for the GPO I don't necessarily believe it because I seem to have got quite a few Concord Blue things um, 
Uh, Chris says his 706 is in the pictures uh, and pictures of the 746 he's got as well. Right, we'll have a look at those pictures again, Chris. I did get them the other week, so I'm going to have a have another look and uh, like I say, we'll we'll have a have a have a look next week on the show. Right, so this wants a lot of work doing on it. It's got a big break in the case up here. Look, it's got a big chunk out of the case there. I don't know if you can if you can see that there. A big chunk out of there. It's got a big chunk out of here. It's had a big chunk out of here that somebody's glued back in fairly badly. Um, whether or not I restore this case or whether I get a replacement um, Concord Blue 706 case because brick phone are still making them, you can get them new. Um, cause it, and then we just use this dial plate thing to convert it to make it have push buttons rather than a dial. Um, I don't know, but we'll see about getting this going. This is also a DC signal in phone, I believe, this one, um, which complicates things that you wouldn't be able to use it on a normal telephone network. It was for a particular kind of private system that had a particular odd kind of signal in. But that's a story for another day. I also, in this batch of phones, there's one, two, three, four there in total, I've also got a fifth one, which is the green 746, which I've just not got to hand at the minute. But that's just a, a box standard green 746. Um, but that, that needs a few parts. It needs a dial bezel and things. I've not looked at that one yet. Right, so that about wraps it up for today. Uh, Chris says that he hardwired his uh, GPO 706 to the line. Excellent. That's how it should be done. That's how it was originally done here as well, with the with the little connector box. Have you, have you got the little GPO or telecom connector box thing on it that colour matches the phone um, to to hardwire it to the line, sort of screwed to the skirting board, which is where a lot of them still are. Uh, a relative of mine has actually got a got a modern phone in their house but still screwed to the skirting board and under many layers of paint when they've painted the skirting board is an old um, GPO little connector where the drop wire used to come in from outside to that and then in that it went out to the out to the line cord went from the connector box to one of these and then other end of this went to your phone of course um, but yeah so if you've got it hard wired in yeah you have got it oh excellent and is it the right colour for the phone as well? Because you had to get them colour matched. You want a green wire? I've got a green wire now. Uh, right, that about wraps it up for today. Um, thanks for watching the show once again. Um, my thanks to everybody out there in the chat, um, particularly uh, to Chris and Claus who are out there. Um, so uh, until next week, when hopefully next week we're back at the same time, hopefully we will be back around about 6.30 next week or just after um, with another episode of Andy's Shed Live. And do you know what the great thing is about this today? I've got one of these little connectors left over. So if you've done your conversion right, you should always end up with one of those left over. Normally, I put them back in the phone. I just put them between two or new terminals in the phone. So that if anybody ever wants to convert it back in the future, they've got the connector. Of course, you don't really need it. You can just use a little bit of wire. But it's nice to have the proper connector. So I'll, I'll probably put that back inside this, uh, this phone somewhere um, eventually. Just so it's there. And the bit is there for... Uh, for future generations should they want to put it back like like Chris has done Michael T says great show Andy thanks yeah thanks Michael thanks for watching um, as I say hopefully we will be back same time same place next week in the meantime if anybody wants to get in touch with us if you want to send us photos of your phones uh, like Chris has already done then the way to do it is to go to our website, which you'll find here. It's at andyshed.corepress.net and you'll find a contact us form on there. If you contact me via the form 
and just say that you want to send a photo, then I will get back to you with an email address that you can send the photo to by email. Okay? We just don't give out the emails on the website or on the show or anything. So if we do, we get loads and loads and loads of spam. And although I like spam, there's a, there's a limit to how much spam you can eat. <laughs> Fush! <laughs> ah, okay, okay. That is really is it for now. Of course, also if you want to join us on Patreon, you can if you want to support the show for just the equivalent of one US dollar a month www.patreon.com forward slash Andy Shed is the one to go there if you want to uh, if you want to uh, do that. But from me for now, have a great week ahead. I will see you as I say around about same time, same place next week. But from me for now, thanks for watching.